I'm Jack Whitaker, and this is the NFL Game of the Week, the Eastern and Western Conference Playoffs. The first part of our story tells how the West was won. From sunny California came the Los Angeles Rams, seeking revenge for an earlier defeat by their opponents today, the Minnesota Vikings. Led by swarthy Roman Gabriel and the fearsome foursome, Coach George Allen came north to Minnesota in hopes of fulfilling a season-long goal. Allen's counterpart, Bud Grant, also had a similar goal, and his hopes rested with the four Norsemen and a California-bred quarterback named Joe Cap. Two teams with similar assets, similar styles, and similar goals. When an immovable object meets an irresistible force, something's got to give. And on this December 27, 1969, the Purple Gang from the North would bring Roman's empire tumbling down in the Western Conference playoffs. As if in the heavyweight championship, both teams disdained a feeling out period and came out slugging from the heels. They fought the first quarter to a standoff, although the Vikings suffered two early bad breaks, Bill Brown's fumble on the second play, and an offsides penalty that nullified a 60-yard touchdown by Carl Eller that followed Brown's fumble. After the penalty, Roman Gabriel led the Rams to the first score of the day, and his strategy was to go with the short game. This consisted of quick traps up the middle by rookie setback Larry Smith, number 38, and short flips to his receivers, such as number 14, Wendell Tucker. The strategy worked well on the hard-charging Viking line, and the Rams finally scored when Gabriel caught the Vikings' own secondary asleep on a rollout, spotting tight end Bob Klein in the open for a 7-0 lead, and the first touchdown scored against the Vikings in the first quarter this season. Minnesota equaled the Rams' long drive with one of their own to tie the score. However, Joe Cap, unlike Roman Gabriel, came out winging. Figuring the Rams' secondary to be their weak link, Cap surprised the Rams with heavy emphasis on passing, since he had beaten them three weeks before with his ground game. Stylistically, Cap does everything wrong, but completes his passes anyway. His strategy was to roll out to his left, away from Deacon Jones and Merlin Olson, and his target was usually Gene Washington, number 84, one of the great receivers of the game. Now inside the five, Dave Osborne dove over to tie the game. It was an impressive start for both teams. The Rams continued to run well on the heralded Purple People Eaters, as Smith and Willie Ellison followed superb line blocking for big gains. But this drive ended in a missed field goal as the second quarter began. The Rams completely dominated this quarter of play, shutting off every phase of the Viking offense while not allowing them to score at all. The key to their success was the containment of Cap and the tight coverage on Gene Washington by cornerback Clancy Williams, number 24. Offensively, the Rams stuck with their short game, and Gabriel was not afraid to run when he had to, despite Minnesota's hard-hitting defense. In fact, this was one of the roughest-hitting games ever seen, and on a very cold Minnesota day, it was a wonder the players were able to hold on to the ball at all. Gabriel converted three third-down situations in this drive, with quick flips to set back Les Josephson, number 34. But on a third and six at the Viking 18, he failed, as Carl Kozuki came up fast to deny the first down and force a field goal that put Los Angeles in front by three. Then later in the quarter, Gabriel and his tight end, Billy Truax, would lengthen the Rams' lead to 10. Truax, number 87, was an integral part of the Ram game plan, 
and his diving catches led Los Angeles downfield as Gabriel was now 10 of 13. From the two, a great play action fake held the defense in and Carl Eller failed to get to Gabriel. Truax beat his man and his third catch of this drive put the Rams into a commanding lead. Gossett's extra point made it 17-7 at the half as the Rams took momentum and a 10-point lead into the locker room. A wise old man once said, a football game is 60 minutes long. The Rams were about to discover that the Purple Gang from Minnesota, unlike many other teams, refused to fold under a 10-point deficit. In fact, for the next 30 minutes, Minnesota's defense would more than vindicate their first half performance. They didn't change their strategy. They just kept hitting and hitting until Roman's empire truly began to fall. The four Norsemen, or front four, Eller, Marshall, Page, and Larson, along with their linebackers and secondary, completely stifled the Rams' offense, shutting them out in the third quarter. Gabriel and the Rams were now going backwards, not forwards. On offense, Joe Cap was helped by his first big break, an interference penalty on cornerback Jim Nettles, number 19. From here, like a championship leader, he quickly capitalized on the break. A bomb to Washington and a penalty took the ball to the six. Then the aggressive Viking quarterback, hardened by years of play in the rough Canadian League, ran right into the Rams defense and almost went over. Osborne vaulted over for his second score, and it was now 17-14. The rest of the quarter saw Cap move his team downfield again, only to throw up his first interception near the goal. However, the Rams could not convert it into points. A minute later, Cap threw his second interception and it looked like Los Angeles would now build on its three-point lead. This the Rams did, but not as much as they would have liked. The rock-strong Gabriel challenged the Vikings himself and got a first down as the third quarter ended. There were now 15 minutes left. 15 minutes of confrontation between two grudgingly tough teams. Gabriel could not pick up a key first down due to the great effort by the four Norsemen, and the Rams had to settle for three in what would turn out to be an important four points the Rams would never see. Down by six, Cap stuck to his game plan continuing to pass freely to his wide receivers, Washington, and number 80, John Henderson. Cap's line was giving him superb protection, and once the fearsome foursome is negated, the Rams are a vulnerable team. Milt Sunday, number 64, led the way on this pass to Bill Brown that set up a third and one on the Rams' 19. Then on a big play, Dave Osborne twisted and turned for the first down to keep the must drive going. The Vikings seem to be playing on hard and guts alone now as their rugged leader refused to be intimidated, a trademark that has made him a truly remarkable quarterback. When he finally took it over himself from the two, Joe Cap had put his team into the lead 21 to 20. And for the first time in the game, the Rams had their backs to the wall. Cap's confidence is reflected in his walk to the bench 
as he gallantly counseled his purple gang to sock it to the good guys in the white suits. Carl Eller must have heard his plea. On the very next play from scrimmage, Eller beat his man to Gabriel and gave the Vikings a three-point lead with a safety. It was the culmination of a super game for the all-pro defensive end, and his teammates let him know it. While the man he beat, all-pro tackle Bob Brown, number 76, dejectedly went to the bench. This play, perhaps the biggest of the game, deserves another look. Watch Eller at top left, hand fight his way to Gabriel for the safety. With eight minutes left, Minnesota now led 23-20. The Vikings couldn't move after the safety, but got another big break when Cap was rocked on third down and fumbled, but his teammates recovered. Though a punt followed, the Rams would have to start their final drive from their own 15, not the Vikings' 40. So with five minutes left, the Viking defense dug in to preserve their precarious three-point lead. But Gabriel led the Rams upfield, again using screens and hitch passes for short but certain gains eating up the yards and the time. On a fourth down play, Truax made a clutch catch and the Rams eventually moved to the Vikings 44, needing only one more pass to get into field goal range to tie the game and send it into sudden death. There were 39 seconds left now, and even the Viking front line was playing cautious, watching for the screens and flares. This defensive strategy paid a huge dividend as Alan Page blocked and caught Gabriel's attempted pass. Page raced downfield and ended the imposing Ram threat, and with it, the game. A repeat of this game-ending play shows that the ball hit number 88, Page, in the chest, flew up, and took the proverbial lucky bounce right into his arms as number 84 Jack Snow watched what he knew was the Rams last gasp for 1969. After only a decade of existence the Minnesota Vikings were about to reach the highest plateau in their conference something that has eluded the Rams for 15 years. Seconds later, a jubilant coach ran off the field to the cheers of his loyal fans. Bud Grant has seen his determined Central Division team put together 30 minutes of perfect football to hold off the tough Los Angeles Rams 23-20 in what was one of the cleanest, roughest, most exciting games of this or any other season. So the good guys in the white suits went back to Hollywood, proud but dejected, while the Purple Gang from Minnesota rode ever onward towards its goal, an NFL championship and a Super Bowl. This has been the story of how the West was won.